Yeah, yeah. Mind pump time. All right, uh, we're gonna give away today. Maps strong, so you can get free access to Maps strong. Great workout, by the way. Great program to build metabolism boosting muscle. Great for the posterior chain. This program builds a butt in the back like you would not believe. Now, here's how you can win access to that program. Uh, leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode so we can boost our algorithm on YouTube. We want to be number one in the world. Your comments help. And if we pick your comment as the best comment, you get access to Map Strong. But you also got to subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. Do those things so you can support Mind Pump and be an awesome person. Also, before we get to the podcast, uh, there's one day left for our sale on Maps Aesthetic and our Extreme Fitness Bundle. Both 50% off. There's 24 hours left for this promotion. Go check them out. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code MAYSPECIAL with no space for the discount. I was actually talking to Justin about this today, this morning when we came in to work out. So we came up with this great uh, idea for a topic for a podcast. It's always a great idea when it's your idea. No, no. Actually, Justin yeah. actually came up with this idea. Yeah, I Justin? Came in, I came he in did. Hot. Now well, I'm a little nervous. Yeah. No, we were having <laughs> <laughs> Should be. White cheese is the only food he knows. <laughs> yeah, the cheese diet. No, we, we, no, here's what happened. So um, I've really starting to reduce my calories with my food intake and uh, for a couple different reasons. One is, uh, you know, going through a process of trying to get real lean. Two, I, I, I am trying to improve my gut health. And the way I do that for my body, right, is I completely eliminate carbohydrates because I tend to react to them sometimes. And this because so, you were saying now your hips were looking bulky? Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> uh, but this morning we're working out and, um, you know, I'm, I'm like 30 minutes in. He shows up. He starts doing his thing. And I'm like, oh, man, it's such a, it's such a mind game for me to to cut calories and stuff because I notice I get weaker, obviously. You're going to get weaker, right, when yeah, you drop yeah. your mm -hmm. calories. And I said, I have, it's so hard. And he goes, oh, yeah, me too. You know, he's, he's doing kind of something similar. And, and, and so totally, start, totally lying, just trying to make you feel better. Yeah, yeah. right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, I'm totally with you, Sam. But, I mean, there's, 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 it's a, there's challenges depending on the kind of person you are, right? Right. So we're talking about this, and Justin thought it would be a great idea to talk about why women in particular should bulk. Why they should go on a calorie surplus. Ooh, I, like I just that. feel like nobody talks about that. You know, that's something that uh, I just don't see that in mainstream media at all, any magazines, any of these like, you know, shape magazines or anything else that's that's out there uh, really addressing the like, like the benefits to that for women. Totally. Well, and ironically, it's like the number one thing that I'd have to do with almost all of my female clients. Well, right. Totally. Totally. And the reason for this, by the way, it's not that women are different than men. And so we're saying women should bulk and, you know, because it's special to them. No, no, no. It's because women almost never uh, try to purposely gain anything at all because they're, they're they, in this, blaming this on media, blame this on standards. Mm -hmm. uh, I blame part of the, part, partly the fitness industry that's called, always uh, talking about getting smaller, getting smaller, losing weight, never talking about the benefits of eating and a calorie surplus. So every time I would get a female client, I would talk to them, hey, have you ever tried to, you know, eat in a way to gain, to gain strength, to gain muscle? And they'd be like, oh my God, no. Yeah. I'm always ever trying to lose. Um, and that's exactly why I would do what I would do, Adam, is because I would put them on a bulk to try to get gain to get them to gain muscle and strength. And we could talk about all the reasons and the benefits for that, but the vast majority of female clients that I ever worked with, anytime they were conscious about their nutrition, under ate. Mm -hmm. They under ate. It was never, okay, let me see if I can speed up my metabolism. Let me see if I can build muscle. It was always, I'm just going to eat as little as possible to try and get smaller. Well, uh, I think between, between the three of us, we're always trying to kind of pick out those avatars of like a common client that we just would see all the time. And, you know, this was just one of those things where I just would always have a female client that the first thing I knew right away is I don't remember the time that they weren't, you know, they were eating in a surplus, let alone like maintenance and not always just trying their best to try and uh, cut down and then do cardio and just were consciously uh, trying to to lose weight or maintain what they got. Yeah. You know, you know, it's funny, by the way, if because I'm such a, a, a supplement fanatic, I love I'm a historian with this kind of stuff. I love looking at old ads and stuff like that. Did you guys know that some of the the original supplements that were ever sold to women and we're talking back in the 40s, 50s and maybe 60s. 
they actually would advertise to women to gain weight. Did you guys know this? No. Mm -hmm. There there were weight gains. For like uh, pregnancy or something? No, to add curves. Don't be a skinny mini or whatever. Oh, really? Yes, to add curves. When was Um, that? That was the 30s? We could could pull it up. Pull that up. Yeah, we could. That was a long time ago. I've never seen that. These are some of the first ones. Now, uh, after that, those decades, that's it. It it was always about weight loss. It was always about being skinny. It was always about getting smaller. Anything you can connect that to? Why? I think part of it had to do with the the this obesity epidemic and this kind of awareness around it um and it became this whole thing about getting smaller uh, all about getting small it wasn't about curve there you go look at that 1954 1936 oh, oh wow yeah you can i mean read some of those titles pretty yeah, interesting me a, yeah, give me a title yeah i don't know gain more weight intended wow yes crash yeah. weight gain and they were advertising to women now back in those days i think the issue if you go back in the 1930s 40s and 50s uh, food know, was a little more scarce. It was it, w- it was an obesity epidemic, right? And so, and a lot of women mm-hmm. wanted to look like uh, they had more curves, and so it was like you got to eat more. Oh, that's very challenging. So let's create some supplements around that. But it totally changed the result of this. And but yes, of course, there is an obesity <laughs> Skinny epidemic. Skinny girls don't have oomph. Isn't that funny? <laughs> don't have the by, oomph. <laughs> by the way, if you look at a lot of these old ads, they were definitely not uh, you know, politically correct in any way. They're yeah. hilarious. Even for men, they were terrible. I like right. the subtitle. It says, it takes those extra pounds of solid fre- uh, flesh to bring out your natural curves. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Oh, that's solid right. flesh. I, did, I didn't know this. Oh, yeah. Did you know this, Justin? Yeah, I, I mean, I'd seen like a 1930s ad or something. I just thought it was like a one-off, though. You know, I didn't know it was like a campaign. Yeah, like no, I, I, did not, I did not know this was ever a thing yeah. for a woman. But then... It, but then since probably the, the I'd say the, the late 60s on, it was all about smaller, smaller, smaller. Every magazine was about being skinny as possible. Of yeah. course, it kind of reached a, its peak in the 80s and 90s with the heroin chic you know, that they had for, the, for these models that were just, they were very, very stick thin. And, 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 and so women, when we would get them as clients, uh, they almost always, anytime they ever tried to do anything with their nutrition, so anytime they beca- became conscious of their diet, it was about... I just need to eat as little as possible. And then there was like variations of that, right? Cut all your carbs or cut all the fat. That was the first one. Or mm-hmm. have two shakes a day and then a meal. That was slim fast. That was kind of popular uh, in, the, in the 80s and 90s. Um, but there's a lot of consequences that, that happen uh, as a result of this, right? Um, one of them being uh, women under eight protein like crazy. And you would see very little muscle mass. And this is a big problem because muscle is metabolically active it balances your hormones. It makes you feel good. And it gives you those curves that you're looking for. Right. But because every time you diet, you, you go so extreme, you end up with very little muscle and a slower metabolism, which makes any kind of being lean unsustainable. Well, and exercising low calorie, low protein is like the perfect formula for like slowing the metabolism down. Totally. It, I mean, yeah. it doesn't get, it doesn't get worse than that. And it's the, and like it was the, you are completely out of balance. And it was the most common thing. In fact, one of the most common things that I would hear from the clients sitting across from me and, you know, we would say we're just first meeting and she would say, you know, Adam, I don't really eat bad. And they would, you know, ride out and they're like, I swear, I only eat, you know, 1400, 1500 calories and look at my food choices and let, but it's years and years of low calorie, low protein. And you're o- just over chipping ex- away at yeah, your lean body mass. Yeah. Over exercising like crazy. And they've just slowed their metabolism down. And I tell you, one of the hardest things too was, you know, here they are saying that, and they want to lose maybe 10, 15 pounds are coming to me or whatever or more. And then telling them that, okay, uh, we don't want to lose any weight, you know? <laughs> and they're like, no, that's actually what I'm paying you. I'm paying you to <laughs> yeah. lose weight. And you're telling me you're not like, I'll go hire somebody else. That was a, a major hurdle to try and overcome as a trainer. No, I remember I've told this story many times. I love it because it was so effective for me. Right. So this was uh, when I managed the 24 hour on Santa Teresa. So that's a club that we've all worked in. And I used to have a trainer that worked for me, female trainer. She was like 5'1", very fit, right? She lifted weights. She wasn't you know, muscular, but she looked very fit, very sculpted, great shape, tone, the whole thing. And she worked for me. And any and anytime I would get a potential member that would come in that was a woman, that would, you know, I'd give them a tour of the gym, right? And I'd show them the cardio. I'd show them the classes. I'd show them the weights. And they'd say things like, I'm not interested in the weights. I don't want that. I'm just trying to lose weight. I don't want to touch that or whatever. Then I'd take them in my office. I'd talk about the benefits of building muscle, speeding up your metabolism. And then I would do this challenge. And it was so effective. It was like one of the most effective sales techniques of all time because it, it really proved an, an incredible point. And I would say to the person, okay, look, 
I'm going to call on one of my trainers right now, and I want you to gain, uh, guess her weight. And if you can come within five to 10 pounds of her weight, I'll give you a free month membership. Okay. So I'd call her attention staff, so and so come to Sal's office, and would walk in my female trainer, and I'd say, How much do you think she weighs? Now they have the idea of getting a free month membership, so they're not lying, right? So they'd say something like, She weighs 100 pounds, 105 pounds, 110 pounds at most. Then I'd say, Okay. You know, and I'd have my trainer stand on the scale and it'd be like 135 or 140 pounds. And there would be, their mind would be blown. Mm -hmm. And I'd say, okay, the reason why you guessed that she was so light was because she's small. But she's small because she doesn't have a lot of body fat. Right. Muscle is very dense. So if you lost 10 pounds right now of, of weight, but it was body fat and you replaced it with 10 pounds of muscle, your weight on the scale wouldn't change, but you would be much smaller. But then there's more things that come along with it. And then I would end up asking the trainer, tell this person what you eat on a regular basis. And then they'd go through their food and then their mind really would be blown. Like, how can this little girl eat so much food? Again, she's burning it off. Well, you know, what's really interesting about that story that you share is that I found that this was actually just as common within my female trainers. So, and I don't know, I, I think I've heard you guys tell your stories about your wives, um, but, you know, we all have wives that were in uh, health and fitness or sports, right? So very, you know, athletic or health minded, mm -hmm. all of us. Mm -hmm. And I know that even when Katrina and I got together, I had to increase her calories. I mean, that was yeah. one of the one of the biggest things that we changed about her diet and training and I remember she used to run all the time. That was her method of staying in shape was running long distance and doing the, you know, plyometrics and high intensity type of, of training, reducing calories. And then when she was off the wagon, she'd put on a little bit of body fat and she was just on this cycle all the time. But she never ate more than about 2,200 calories, 2,300 calories. And I said, well, have you ever tried to bulk and she's mm -hmm. like bulk well, I mean, yeah, I mean why would I bulk yeah she goes I unintentionally do it when I stop training and I eat pizza and I don't pay attention so yeah I guess I'm like, no, no 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 like intentionally trained yourself to build muscle to speed up your metabolism and it took years into our relationship before I convinced her to even trust me to do this with her and it blew her mind because she's like I this is crazy to me on how many calories I now eat with zero cardio whatsoever and I'm in the best shape of my life mm -hmm. and that's the result of actually bulking and building your metabolism up. Oh yeah, same story. I mean, it was the high intensity interval training. It was the cardio kickboxing. It was everything, you know, typically that I would have from clients. Like, like my wife was in that same kind of uh, rat race where it was just like, I always constantly have to burn, burn, burn calories, uh, you know, in order to keep or lose weight and, and to shed down this body fat. And so to take her through a program like anabolic first thing and then put her on a bulk uh, was a complete shell shock. But it was it, it was so massively beneficial than, you know, what that produced and, and what kind of strength she got as a result of that. And then her body actually composition started to change. And then the momentum of that really carried her on in a healthy place. Oh, Je Jessica, uh, she went from eating 1,200 calories a day, doing uh, miles of running every single week, lots of circuits, would gain weight if she in any more than that. And she used to say, like she told me when we first met, like, oh, I'm my, my body just wants to gain weight. I have to be very careful. I'm like, let's, let's try doing a bulk. Let's do a slow bulk and have you lift weights. Well, now we're at the point where she just trips out. She's like, this is crazy, Sal. She's like, I can eat like crazy. Yeah, Katrina eats mm -hmm. with me. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I stay lean. And, and she had to go on a bulk to do that. You know, Here's the other problem that you run into when you're on this constant uh, deficit, when you're always trying to eat little calories. This is very common for women. Your hormones get yes. really thrown off in a negative way. I, I, I have had countless female clients work with me. And if I used to work very closely with a functional medicine practitioner when I used to have my studio and we would work with clients together. And I can't tell you how many, it's countless female clients who their cycles were irregular or they would have all these, these symptoms of hormone imbalances where they're cold intolerance mm -hmm. or heat intolerance. Uh, their sleep was off. They would notice Losing things about hair. Their, their hair. And I, I would put them on a higher calorie diet, higher protein diet, higher fat diet. Oftentimes proteins and fats were too low in their diets. And then I would have them lift weights and then slowly but surely things would start to balance out. And I'm going to tell you something right now. Your hormones make a very big difference. Your hormones can tell your body to build muscle or to gain body fat or to keep fat off or to get rid of muscle. Of course, it controls your libido, your energy, your moods. 
if you're constantly in a calorie deficit, you are telling your body, uh, don't be fertile. Don't be motivated to be fertile yeah. because calories are scarce. Mm -hmm. um, you're in this kind of stress response. You notice it in your skin, your nails, your hair. Again, I know I mentioned things like libido, energy, and so on. And that's what I would see with this constant cutting all the time. Once you reverse that, put someone on a, a, a responsible and appropriate bulk along with a form of exercise that's pro-tissue, which is traditional resistance training, mm -hmm. you would see this miraculous changes in, in, in their bodies. Well, and, and you know they've done such a great job of aggressively marketing the opposite. Because yeah, totally. Because you talk about these three women right now, right? All all very educated, all in the fields, health, personal trainer, collegiate level athlete, like right. very smart women. They never received this information. Married to trainers right. <laughs> and still had this challenge. So you have to think, like, and then of course, I, I, I can't, why we're sitting here talking, it's such a great idea, Justin, to go this direction because I cannot remember a single client that this was not an issue. It was just, it would just became common practice right. with all female clients that no matter what your goal was, the first thing that I was going to do with you was to put you on a caloric surplus and build some muscle. Right. Now, and, and, and by the way, I get this uh, because I was like this, but in the opposite. So I was a skinny kid. I was a very skinny kid. The whole reason why I picked up a weight when I was 14 years old in the first place was because I wanted to build and gain weight. So I was the opposite. Now, because of this insecurity and fear of the scale moving in the wrong direction, which for me was down, I was constantly in a bulk, always in a bulk. I ate everything I possibly could. Every, yeah. All calories were good for me. And anytime I, I tried to get a little leaner, I had this fear as soon as I saw the scale move one pound down. Oh my God, I'm losing muscle. What's going on? And I would get this from female clients. They would freak out if the scale moved in the other direction, even though it was positive weight, or if they felt the shape change, like, why are my jeans tighter here? I'm like, well, your quads are growing or your butt's growing. And they would freak out. And it's the mind games that you get from that because what you want to see as a woman oftentimes is, I don't care. I just want to see the scale move down. Mm -hmm. I've had, this happens, this has happened many times. This is a reality, by the way. You can lose weight and have your body fat percentage go up. Mm -hmm. And this, sometimes it's hard for people to understand because they're like, how's that possible? I lost weight. Body fat percentage is a, it's your body, that means your body fat as a percentage of your overall body weight. That's what matters, not the total weight on the scale. So if you took a 200 pound man with, uh, you know, 10% body fat, right? And you took that same total amount of body fat and put it on a 100 pound man, the body fat percentage now is 5%, right? It's half. See what I'm saying? So if you lose weight and you lose muscle, let's say you lost 10 pounds, eight of it is muscle, two of it is body fat. You're, you're 10 pounds lighter on the scale. Your body fat just went up. You're smaller but flabbier, mm -hmm. and you have a slower metabolism. So some of the benefits. So I, I want to go into some of the benefits that bulks provide and why they're so important, especially for people who almost never do them or never intentionally do them. Well, I'm so glad right you way. brought up too, though. Um, how similar this is to your own insecurity totally. because mm -hmm. uh, I was the same way and I was a trainer and have, I mean, that's my profession yet. I was just as guilty of allowing my insecurity to drive, drive my, my bad behaviors when it came to nutrition and exercise. It was just like you, I was afraid of the scale going the opposite direction of what most of these girls are afraid of. But the truth is my the best thing and what my body needed more than anything else was to go into a cut and That's actually right. go the other direction. And so a lot of this is fuel for that. So I think a big piece is the marketing and the advertising because that's what people do. And again, marketing always does feed into the insecurities. Mm -hmm. And then it's ourselves being insecure about that. You know, we everybody has one, right? Everyone has a direction they mm -hmm. don't want to go. I don't want to get bigger. I don't want to get smaller. And so that it just seems counterproductive if you are wanting to get smaller to add calories because inevitably you might see things right you might see uh, inches in certain areas go up you might right you might see your arms because you start all of a sudden lifting muscles or you might see your quads get more developed but th the shape right you're gonna you're gonna lose body fat and build muscle it's a total different body composition right there are benefits to gaining uh muscle in certain circumstances and there are benefits to losing body fat in certain circumstances and by the way they both oftentimes can be synergistic so in other words, for someone always trying to gain like me, what I what, what helped me a lot later on when I finally figured this out was learning how to get lean. It actually helped me mm -hmm. build more lean body mass, right? And if you're always trying to get lean, but you never focus on gaining positive tissue like muscle, mm -hmm. you're making it very challenging for yourself. In fact, if you're listening right now and this is you, this is what your experience has probably been. You've probably lost weight many times and gained it back. And here's what you're finding. 
each time you try to lose it, it's harder, harder than it was the time and before. It's much harder than the, than it was the time before. And this is because you're probably losing the wrong kind of weight. And then when you gain it back, it comes back as, as body fat. Yeah. And I mean, you're less effective in the gym. Like there's, there's something to it, that, which is something I noticed too by putting some of my female clients on a bulk was just their overall attitude, energy, strength, and, uh, you know, just, just enjoyment of being there and going through these workouts was, was tremendously different. And I just, you know, to, to be able to, to feel what that is supposed to feel like and, and to be able to nourish your body when it needs, you know, the calories, uh, you, you know, it is a completely different animal. And it's something that I, I just hope, you know, that, that they trust they can go through that. It's process. also super empowering to go into this thing that you might be fearing and then you stick with it and you're like, okay, let me trust the process. And then you see it start to work. Like, I'm not afraid of this anymore. Mm -hmm. Now I can utilize this as a way to get myself healthier and more fit. Now, the obvious first uh, benefit of doing a, a bulk, okay? A bulk, by the way, is when you're eating more calories than you're burning. And we're not talking about just eating a ton of food. Obviously, this is that you're eating the right kinds of foods. You're not going crazy with it, but you are eating more than you're burning. This, and you're training in a particular way, this fuels muscle growth. Now, why is muscle growth such an important thing? Boy, does it make getting lean and staying lean easy. If you have, by the way, most women listening right now, if you were to gain 10 pounds of muscle, that's a lot of muscle, by the way. I'm going to be honest with you. Most of you won't gain 10 pounds of muscle. Most of you won't gain 10 pounds of muscle in a year. But if you did gain 10 pounds instantly right now, if you're listening to podcasts and I snap my fingers, you gain 10 pounds, you wouldn't be that much bigger. You wouldn't even notice that much with size. Yeah. What you would feel is a lot tighter. So you touch yourself and be like, man, I'm a lot tighter. And then what you'd notice is, oh my gosh, uh, I'm just getting leaner yeah. automatically. Well, I've got this way faster metabolism. Especially if you did it clean and slow. Yes. yes. Because if you did it with just a slight surplus, like we're not going crazy and just saying, I'm going to eat everything in sight. Right. Right. You're not going to just, you're not going to gain 10 pounds necessarily on the scale because what might happen is you might add five pounds of muscle along the way and lose three pounds of fat. That's usually what happens. Right. That's usually what happens. And that more muscle obviously speeds up the metabolism. We said that. It also feels and looks very good. Oftentimes when we re refer to like sexy curves, what we're talking about is is the sculpt that comes from muscle, right? Mm -hmm. If you build the muscles of your butt, right. your, your hamstrings- Major muscle group in the body. Yeah. You're, you're, and yeah. And that, that is, that's a good point. Like when you're doing, when we talk on the podcast about the, the big bang for your buck exercises, your squats and your deadlifts, for example- the prime movers there are the glutes, right? So it's, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's the, one of the biggest muscles of the body. So if you were to gain 10 pounds of muscle on your body, a good chunk of it would go to your butt, your hamstrings, mm -hmm. some quads, maybe some back, a little bit of shoulders. And what you would notice is you just look more firm. Mm -hmm. You look more sculpted. Things feel tighter. Of course, you're stronger. You feel more stable. And then you have this metabolism now that is roaring. It's not, it was not, uh, you know, crazy or it wasn't out of the ordinary for me to take a female client, go through this process and boost their metabolism by 500 calories. Yeah. You might think that's not a lot. That's like doing an hour and a half of cardio every day, but you're not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Imagine that. Imagine if you burn yeah. 500 more Automatic calories. Automatic calorie burn. Just yeah. waking up. Oh, I just burned 500 more calories. That's like adding an extra meal in your day. Now eat the same amount of calories and what ends up happening? You're in a 500 calorie deficit. You're getting leaner, uh, easier. It's much more easy to maintain. It's easier to get lean. And then when you're there, you can eat more food because you have more of this metabolically active tissue. Now, why do you have to get in a bulk to do this? You have to fuel the muscle that you're trying to build. So if I'm lifting build, weights- can't build from thin air. No, it's like it's like giving the, the, the building plans to a house to a bunch of workers. But no wood. Yeah, there's no materials. Yeah. Like You have to feed the body once you send the signal so that your body has things to work with. It's got amino acids and fats and carbohydrates to build this incredible you know, lean body mass that's so desirable that speeds up uh, your metabolism. Now, this leads to the next point, which is it balances out your hormones. Now, what do, you know, people are like, what does that mean, balance out the hormones? Hmm. Okay, your hormones tend to match your lifestyle because your body's receiving signals from your lifestyle, the things that you do, and so your hormones will kind of match in a way to adapt to what you're doing. So if I'm not getting good sleep, 
If I'm not feeding myself very well or if I'm eating very little, I'm doing tons and tons of cardio, lots of stress, lots of stress on the body. So my stress hormones go up. Why do stress hormones go up? Like cortisol. They give you energy. If I inject you with cortisol right now, you'll notice this boost uh, of energy. So yeah. cortisol goes up, right? But because also I'm under this kind of stress, my anabolic hormones, my pro-fertility hormones start to get out of whack. And men, it's testosterone. It starts to lower. In women, you notice a change in progesterone and estrogen. You also notice growth hormone starts to go down a little bit, right? Now, what if I tell my body to build muscle? What if I lift weights or do resistance training and I feed my body? My body's getting a signal that says there's plenty. There's plenty out in the world. Obviously, I'm eating more than I'm burning. Oh, and I'm sending a signal that says I need more muscle. We better ramp up the pro-muscle hormones or we better balance out those hormones because now we want to be fertile. By the way, that's youth. That's what youthful hormones are yeah. like. So you notice estrogen, progesterone balance out. You notice even in women, you'll see a slight rise in testosterone. This is a good thing. Testosterone is important for women like it is in men. For women, it's obviously much lower, but testosterone is connected to confidence, drive, uh, libido. It's so connected to building muscle too. And it's building, the catalyst of building muscle. Right. Growth hormone starts to become uh, you know, much more youthful. So the process of building muscle with a calorie surplus uh, balances out hormones oftentimes. In fact, if you go to a, a functional medicine practitioner and your hormones are all over the place, besides looking at things like sleep and stress and those kinds of things, they will almost always have you eat in a slight surplus along with some kind of resistance training to balance it out. Well, and another one that you know comes to mind right away that I would always notice as soon as I would increase their calories is it's amazing like how quick the body responds and says, thank you. I needed all that. Like, yes. It's so hard, okay? It's, not, it's impossible to hit your nutrient targets when you're eating 1,300 calories. Mm -hmm. You're not. You're going to be missing so many micro and macro nutrients that your body needs, and simply putting that client into a surplus, all of a sudden the body starts getting all these things that it wasn't getting before, and it thanks you immediately, yeah. and you feel that in your energy levels. Yeah, that's a good point because we do have calorie and macro nutrient requirements. So calorie, obviously, one of those are macronutrient requirements, proteins, fats. Uh, those are essential. Carbohydrates make up the the difference. But then there's micronutrient requirements. And the, the easy ones are like your vitamins and minerals, for yeah. example. Yeah, B12, iron, all yeah. those things. Protein goes up, yeah. calcium, all these things that you were lacking in. Right. So if your calories are really low all the time, the odds are you're not also getting the micronutrients you need. And mm -hmm. I know some people think, oh, I'll just take a multivitamin. Right. It's not the same. Now, multivitamins can make a difference. But studies will show getting it from food, it's way more bioavailable. It makes way more of a difference uh, in the body to get your vitamins and minerals from food than it because it comes along with these like cofactors and you know, food digests in a particular way. Your body's evolved to get nutrients from food. So you're absolutely right. Cause so the first thing that they tend to notice is like, I've got more energy. Yeah. I'm not as sleepy or I don't feel as moody or I don't feel as irritable later on in the day or tired later on in the day. I feel more hyped and energized, which is, uh, by the way, this is great when you're when you're working out. Uh, you're stronger, you feel more stable. Um, it just feels good. I used to love getting, you know, telling having women comment on that. They would do this slight bulk, and they'd come in and be like, "I feel great." Yeah, you know, I feel really, really good. Well, and it also, I mean, it's an attitude thing too. Yeah. Like it's uh, you don't really notice it because it's something that you probably got adjusted to, and you just have have lived this way for so long, and this is sort of your routine. And and when you change it up like that, you understand that like now I'm feeding my body, everything's getting more close to balance. That what that feeling feels like and what that energy level is. And it's just all of a sudden there's like a whole new door that just opened. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I can feel like this too. And there's ways to cycle that in more uh, to benefit you. Well, and then you see the carryover in all aspects of life. You're better at work. You're yeah. a better wife. You're a better mother. And all of a sudden, like, you're more productive. You get, you you get just, better sleep. Like, yeah, all, these things. all those things start compounding in your day. Yeah. Um, increased strength is my favorite. You notice more performance in the gym. And I'll tell you what. Uh, obviously guys, when I would train guys, of course we're generalizing by the way, but guys are always like, oh, I want to get stronger. Women would be like, oh, I just want to you know, lose weight and getting stronger. You know, I guess that's kind of cool. That is changing though. I will say that. I've heard more women ask me about getting... So I, I, You know it, why? Because they're finally experiencing what it feels like. Like yeah. when I would get a female client to get stronger, all of a sudden she's like, I like this feeling of yeah. grabbing and feeling, you know, grabbing items. It's empowering. Them. I had one client, I never forget, this this younger woman. She was very, very slim, chronic dieter or whatever. 
And I trained her for a little while. I'll never forget. She went on a business trip. She came back. She was almost in tears when she told me this because she was petite. And she says, for the first for the first time in a long time, I didn't have to ask somebody to help me put my luggage in the overhead compartment. You know, when you get in the plane, you yeah. put your thing in there. And she's short, so she had to really reach up tall. She's like, I did it myself, Sal. You know, you say how crazy that feels. Yeah. She said, she and I told her, I said, you know, I never thought of that. And she goes, Do you know I don't I you know, I don't really think about it too much. She goes, but to have to always ask somebody to do that for me, mm-hmm. I didn't realize what a big deal it was until I did it myself. I had a client that did that that would open her own jar. Like, yeah. just like, psh, my, like I don't ask my husband anymore. Yeah, <laughs> being strong, <laughs> like awesome. the little things, man. Yeah, it's little things. Being strong is very, it feels very good and secure and capable. And when you bump your calories and do resistance training, proper resistance training with it. It feels amazing to feel this new sense of strength, this physical strength uh, that you have uh, in your body. Um, This one is an easy one to sell um, uh, to women, which is that you'll have sustainable fat loss. You know, uh, let me paint the picture of the traditional way that people lose weight and why it's so unsustainable, right? What they do is they'll typically, they'll do lots of cardio because they're looking at exercise Mainly for its calorie burn. Yeah. It's so, like a math equation. Yes, yes. Which form of exercise burns the most calories? Well, it's easy, running, right? So, okay, so I run, and then I'm also going to cut my calories. Now, here's what happens. Because you're doing lots of running, you don't require lots of strength to do it. Your body is trying to get better at running. It's actually trying to become a more efficient running machine, which means it le- needs less muscle, and it also needs to burn less calories. So that causes you to lose some muscle, and it's true. Studies will show cardio with diet tends to result in about half the weight lost being muscle, half of it being body fat. So 10 pounds comes down, five pounds is body fat, five pounds is muscle. So now they're smaller, same body fat percentage, because remember they lost fat and muscle, but now their metabolism is slower. So then they get to this place where they're like, okay, I lost the first 10 pounds. Nothing's moving anymore. I've totally plateaued. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another two days of running. And then they do it again. Uh, now I got to cut my calories even more. Then they reach their target. I lost 30 pounds on the scale, not realizing that 15. <laughs> but I'm eating 800 calories and I'm running on the treadmill seven days yeah, a week. Yeah, I'm doing five days yeah. a week of running. I mean, 1,000 calories a day. Like, that is not sustainable. It's impossible to sustain for most people. For many reasons, too. It's not just not sustainable because it's a miserable way to live. But, I mean, every life happens for everybody. You're going right. to go out to dinner with your spouse and want to have a glass of wine. Somebody's birthday is going to come around the corner. And there's nothing. And how many times have you heard this before, too, where it's like, man, Adam, I eat so good. I mean, every once in a while, I have a glass of wine or every once in a while we eat out dinner. But I feel like anytime I do that, yes. it sticks to me. Right. I don't understand. Why is it like, why does it feel like I can't I can't slightly eat outside of my chicken and salad type of you know meal plan all the time without feeling like I put on fat every single totally time? Totally true. And muscle is a much more resilient way to maintain fat loss because- if you work out and you're eating in a way to build muscle and you do build muscle, let's say you gain you know, four pounds of muscle and then you stop working out for a couple of weeks, muscle sticks around. Now, of course, if you stop long enough, you'll lose that muscle, but it actually sticks around for a little while. That metabolism boost that you have, it sticks around. Now, if the way that I'm burning calories is this manual cardio, the second I stop, it's gone. The benefit's gone. My body is no longer burning those extra calories and that's why they'll see that is they'll go off a little bit then they'll, they'll gain body fat like nothing. Whereas if you did it through building muscle and you stop for a little bit, you might notice a little bit of strength loss or whatever. You go back to the gym. Remember there was that study that uh, I think Lane Norton shared where they compared- Three on, one off. Yeah, they had groups. They had two groups of men. One group lifted weights or worked out with weights uh, every single week consistently. The other group did three weeks on, one week off. Yeah, and like I think it was like- Three a, or six months. It was like, like a, it was like a 16-week study or something yeah. like that. And what they found, first off, in, within the study, very predictable. The guys that took the week off, during the week off, they would see a little dip in performance, a little dip in strength. But at the end of the study, at the end of the 16 weeks, I think it was 16 weeks, they found that they were pretty similar yeah. with the game. And that's because muscle is very resilient. So building it sets you up for much more sustainable fat loss because- Let's be real. The average person is not going to not miss a week working out their whole life, right? They're going to miss time. They're going to have those times when they go to birthdays and stuff. And what, what's going to buffer against that is muscle that doesn't get off your body too quickly. That's what happens when you lift weights. But also a faster metabolism. You have this buffer against eating you know, some of these extra calories. In fact, 
when I when clients have decent muscle and strength and they eat extra calories sometimes, they throw in the extra high calorie day because they went out. You know what they often notice? A little extra strength in the gym. Yeah. It actually yeah. goes to a little fuel, more muscle definition too. Right. Because they have that signal that says, mm-hmm. uh, I want to build muscle. Now the the last one, which is I think one of my favorite things mm-hmm. that would would help my female clients is it would help them break away from the scale number. Yes. Yeah. It, it, it no longer, like that is like one of the hardest things. Now, how, how often did you hear this too? Someone hires you and they say, Adam, I want to get down to 125 yeah. or I want to mm-hmm. get down to 115 or 130. They have a number. And I, you know, I always chuckle because it's like, that doesn't matter. I said, it really does. And they're like, no, no, I try, it does matter. Because I remember what I look like at 135. And they're, 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 so, uh, they're such a slave to the scale that they have this idea of their, their body image with a number. Yeah. And once you show them that you can completely change their body composition at their current weight where they're currently at right now or not really moving weight or maybe even going up yeah. a little bit, it completely shatters that well, paradigm. even just gaining healthy weight. Uh, That's why I love this so much because you know, there's there's a lot that like we may criticize in terms of like some of the market marketing tactics based off of like what the current culture is kind of promoting. So we've seen this drastic shift of you know the the models that were basically starving themselves to now you know we're looking at other models that are you know maybe in an unhealthy weight situation, but they're loving themselves, and so that's sort of the underlying message. Well, you know what we need to start looking for are healthy uh, ways to increase weight and. and and, and in what that looks like and what it what it looks like building muscle in something that's actually beneficial to you that actually is going to give you really good body composition but you may you may keep the same way or you may actually gain a little bit of weight and that's really healthy yeah and in the main ways I used to I used to love seeing this because you would see their body image uh, improve dramatically because yeah. they start to get over their fear of the scale maybe going up that's right? right or they or like you said Adam, They've now broken the chains to the scale. In fact, there were some. There were oftentimes this is something I would have to do. I'd say probably one fourth of the time, uh, at least, is I would tell a female client because we they would struggle with this, and we'd go back and forth, and I'd train them for a little while. Oh, are you sure, Sal? Like at the scale, I'm, I'm up a pound, or I saw it go up two pounds, or whatever. And I'd say, okay, here's what we're gonna do. I want you to take your scale and put it in the closet, and you're not gonna weigh yourself any, anymore. We're gonna completely ignore the scale. For three months. At the end of three months, we're going to test your body fat and see where you're at. And they would do it. And then I'd test their body fat. And I'd be like, guess what? You went down 4% body fat or 5 And then I would do the math for them. That means you've lost this many pounds of body fat. You've gained a little bit of muscle. Oh, and by the way, if you haven't noticed with your diet, you're eating more and you're doing okay. And, and that would be such a great thing for their body image because now they're, they're not fearful of eating a little extra. Mm-hmm. And by the way, this actually would contribute to more balance in their diet anyway, because here's where the whole like binge comes from when you go off of a diet. It's the whole, I hate my body, I hate my body, I hate my body. Right. That's it, I'm off the diet. And then they, you know, instead of having a, a one cookie or a slice of pizza, it goes in the opposite direction. Well, when you have this more, bo- this positive body image where you don't really fear the extra calories or whatever, you're not in that position. Then when you do go out with your friends, you enjoy a slice of pizza, but you don't find yourself going in the opposite direction because you're rebelling against this you know, tyrannical version of yourself that was always right. having you eat in this calorie deficit all the time. So it makes a very, very positive impact on your body image if you're fearful of ever eating in a calorie surplus. If you do it and you build muscle with it, you'll start to develop this better this better connection to it. And I, I want to share this. I used to share this story with my clients. Right? So, and I feel like somebody needs to hear this that's, that's listening or watching this right now. So if you're somebody who uh, needs to or wants to lose weight, so you, whatever number, 30, 40, 50 pounds, or even 15 pounds, doesn't matter, and you're getting ready to start your, your weight loss or fat loss journey, and you're just getting really started, and let's take two, two, two scenarios, same, basically same goal, same way this person needs to lose 30 pounds. These two people need to lose 30 pounds, and we have two different scenarios right here as far as a client that's listening to me or not. Client one uh, at the end of the month, has lost ten pounds. Okay, they maybe they reduced their calories, or they ate consistently, and then they've they've lost ten pounds. Then I have the other client who hasn't lost any weight. Now, a lot of times, the client would go, "Oh my God, the client that lost ten pounds has had more success." That's right. And the opposite is true. When you first start off training, no matter how big, no how big, big the number is, 30, 50, 100 pounds you need to lose, that initial month, I do not want to see weight come off the scale. If you have not been strength training at all 
and we start to follow a meal plan and we start strength training, I do not want to see the scale to go down. And if you were my client and I saw that after week one that we dropped two or three pounds, You're bumping their calories. I'm bumping your calories. Yeah. And then if the following week you drop another pound or so, I'm bumping the calories again. I actually want to find a place where I know you're not losing yet because the main goal when we first start is to build this metabolism up. I want to build a roaring metabolism because I know whether it's 15 pounds or 100 pounds that we need to lose, I want that metabolism working for us and I don't want the whole process working against the metabolism. So keep that in mind because that's really hard for, it was really hard for my clients to wrap their brain around that when they hire me, tell me they want to lose a bunch of weight and then I'm telling them that I don't want to see any weight loss at the beginning and if we do see weight loss, that's a signal to me as a coach that I need to increase calories. You know, what's funny mm -hmm. is that I, I never worked uh, with you guys specifically in gyms, right? We knew of each other, we don't, but we all came to the same conclusion. I would, I would tell my clients mm -hmm. the exact same thing towards the end. And it took me a while to figure that out, by the way. For the first half of my career, it was about just getting the scale to move down. But then later on, I realized exactly what you did. It's like, okay, here's what's happening with people. They're losing weight and then they all gain it back. And we're in this crappy situation. And so I figured out the same thing. Let's keep you from losing weight initially, boost your metabolism, create this fat burning machinery to get hotter in your body. And then later, and then when we start to lose weight, it's much more easy to sustain. Well, and that's really a shift in, in the confidence in who you are as a trainer, because what used to cause me to do the same thing too was wanting to keep my client. That's right. Give them what they, what they yeah, think they want. Yeah. yeah. Afraid that I'm going to lose them. Yeah. And I knew, and I tell you what, I guarantee anybody who hires me that needs to lose any amount of weight, I can get you to lose weight in the first 30 days. That's simple. I just need to find out where you're currently at calorie wise, restrict calories, get you moving more than what you were for. Done. And you will lose weight. That's a fact. The problem is, I know that 99.9% .9 of those people that go on that path are going to fail eventually. Whether they get to their goal initially because they have the discipline to keep starving themselves and moving like crazy, ultimately, long-term, that client will fail. The one that will succeed long-term and forever may take a little bit longer because we take the time to build the metabolism, focus on strength, focus on increasing calories, but that is the client that has the most chance for long-term success. Totally. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Adam, I want I want you to go through kind of how you would typically have a woman bulk, uh, you know, how you would have her bumper calories. Now, for me, it was the range was between 100 to depending on the client, 400 calories over what they were eating to what they were eating when they saw me. So they would track their food, I'd see their calories, and then I'd bump it, let's say 200 calories, of course, in combination with traditional resistance training. And that would be how I would do a bulk. Was how was yours? So that would so that would normally be it. one, two, I would uh, no cardio. So that's I wouldn't let them do cardio yet. So walking's fine, right? So if we want to create mm -hmm. movement, I'm on. They're on a three day a week type of strength strength training program. And you're right, the numbers somewhere in there. But really, the way we or I would focus on it would be we we are monitoring weight. I want to see it, and that and I would say to them, listen, I want you to to check in on the scale for me because I'm what I'm watching is I don't want to see it dramatically go any direction. I kind of want to hover right where you're at. Because I know if you weren't strength training before, we weren't following what you were eating. And now I am paying attention to what you're eating. And we now are inclu including extra strength training. I know that your body is sending a signal to build muscle. And if we are dropping in calories, we may not be building muscle. We may just be burning calories and losing weight. And that's not the goal of a strength training right now. My goal is to build muscle on you. So I'm watching week by week and I'm adjusting calories up or down based off of the way the scale moves. And typically it fell in that range, 100 to 400 calories. Yeah. Now, the next thing would be that would be important was hit your protein targets. Right. Uh, yeah. You got to eat your pro protein. Yeah. And, and I would always aim for about, you know, anywhere between 60% uh, or 100% of their body weight in protein. What I mean by that is if you're 120 pounds, I'm looking at, you know, 75 grams of protein at the minimum, up as high as 120 grams protein. And with all so long as it falls within those calories. So I, I I love targeting one to one. And the reason why I like targeting one to one is I know that sometimes they're going to miss and if they miss and they're a little lower, it's That's a good point. It's yeah. not a big deal, right? And and, and so I just, and it, and it's also easy to calculate. You tell yeah. a client 6, you know, 0. 0.6 or 0. 0.8 grams yeah. per pound of body weight, they're going like, "Uh, oh, what's the math on that?" Or if they have to if you do the real formula like all of our books would, it would be based off a 
lean body mass, which yeah. now they got to do all this crazy math. I'd be like, listen, we weigh this much. Yeah. This is a goal. Try and target one to one. If you fall a little short, not a big deal. That's kind of the number we want to be at. We don't need to go anything beyond that. We're not getting any extra benefits. And just focusing on that, honestly, I really didn't put a lot of energy and focus on the other foods yet. At the mm -hmm. very beginning, it was like, let's Hit yeah, your protein. Calories and protein. That's right. Calories and protein. Let's not let the scale move up or down too much. And let's strength train. And mm -hmm. like no cardio. Walking is fine and moving. That's good. That's all. It's a drastic shift for, for a lot of people. Oh, so, yeah. 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 And, and, and then here's the signs that you're looking for. Uh, strength in the gym. That's yep. got to be the biggest one. Like, am I stronger? Do I have more energy? Do I feel more vibrant? Am I mean, I sleeping better. All the benefits you've been talking that's about. That's right. I mean, you're, that's what you're looking for. Yes. You're looking for all the benefits that we've been talking about. You're asking those questions. How does your hair feel? How's your skin feel? How's your sleep been? How's your mood? How's your libido? Like all these energy, strength in the gym, performance. Mm -hmm. Like how are all these things going? Mood, like you touched into all these things I'm asking because I know those are all the benefits of being in a caloric surplus and strength training. And as long as we're checking those boxes off, we're hovering about the, the same way. Now, the hardest part and where the coaching comes in or where your job, where you really got paid the big bucks for is to help them get past that mental hurdle. Totally. A hundred percent. That's it. A hundred percent. Cause you don't want to see the, you want to see the scale move down mm -hmm. or you don't, you want to see, the, you don't want to see the scale move up a little bit or whatever. So that's a hundred percent. So when you're doing this, you got to trust the process, pay attention to the fact that you feel all those amazing benefits, pay attention to the fact that you're stronger in the gym, pay attention to the fact that you can now start to eat more and the scale isn't moving at all. That's really cool. When I'm, I'm eating three or more calories a day, but I didn't gain any weight. Like this is, and I'm stronger. This is pretty cool. Like pay attention to those things, trust the process. And I would say, you know, on average, most women should probably go through a bulk at least once a year, if not at least yeah. two or three times a year, you know, for like a, at least a month or two months just to get these, these incredible benefits. And hiring a good coach that understands these concepts, you know, is just another good thing for accountability. And just because to, to reiterate that you're doing the right thing, I think there just needs to be a lot of conversations. It takes a lot of times for, for, for people to feel comfortable with this approach. So the, the next thing that I think that somebody who's listening right now that's okay, you sold me. You sold me. Right. I, I'm going to try and do this, but where do I start? I have no idea where my calories. And that's why we have the macro calculator. That's right. And what I want the person that goes to this the website to go to use the macro calculator, do not get married to that either. It's just a good it's place. It's an estimate. That's right. Is it, was it mapsmacro.com, I think? It yes. Is, if I'm not mistaken. So that you go there, you, you put in your goals, you put in your weight, you put in all your stuff, and then it's going to kick you off. That is not the that's not the freaking end all be all. It's just a good idea of probably where you need to be. The real thing you should be watching is what I said before. Is now that you got a number, you're like, okay, this is what my body needs. I'm gonna do what Sal was saying. I'm gonna give a give myself a couple hundred, maybe a hundred to two hundred more calories a day. And then you're monitoring and then you're watching. And just because your goal is weight loss, if you start seeing the scale drop down and you're following this number, those numbers aren't perfect. Add, mm -hmm. increase the calories. The goal should be for you to kind of hover the same on the scale. If you are training, you're being consistent three days a week, strength training, and you're making good choices, you're hitting your protein targets, I promise you are changing your body composition. Yeah, I would say the best workout programs that we have specifically for this, MAPS Anabolic has is, is got to be up there. MAPS yep. Strong would probably be a good, another good program. Yeah, MAPS Strong is who I, I would, okay, if you are relatively new, either relatively new or you've been off your gym consistently, I'm putting you in MAPS Anabolic. If you're actually very consistent with your lifting and you're listening to this message, but you've never really gone on a bulk, I would love to transition you into something like strong with the same advice. Perfect. So there you go. That's why you should bulk, uh, especially if you're a woman and you fall in the categories of the things that we talked about. Look, if you like our content, you got to head over to mindpumpfree.com. We have so many free things that you can download and get from us. Great information. Again, mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Self-image is, am I a person worthy of being taken care of? Am I a human worthy of some dignity, some respect? I have some good qualities to me. I'm not a bad person. Body image is just objective. I look in the mirror. I'm short. I'm tall. I'm hairy, bald, or I'm fat, or I'm overweight. And 